Understanding the logic of biconditional syllogisms requires that we understand the logic of biconditional propositions. This in turn requires that we understand the logic of the term only if. To get into this, let's consider a very basic example. I can make a cake only if I have flour. Notice that a proposition containing the term only if can be turned into a hypothetical proposition. However, it requires a little bit of thinking about how to do this. With the proposition we're considering, there are two possibilities. If I have flour, then I can make a cake, or if I can make a cake, then I have flour. To decide which of these is correct, let's assume that it's true that I can make a cake only if I have flour. What about the first possible translation? If I have flour, then I can make a cake. Is that true? Not necessarily. If flour is the only thing I have, then I can't make a cake. Flour is just one of the ingredients necessary. However, think about the second possible translation. If I can make a cake, then I have flour. That's certainly true. So, saying, if I can make a cake, then I have flour, is the correct way to translate, I can make a cake only if I have flour. Notice then that in translating the original proposition into a hypothetical proposition, two things have occurred. First of all, the word only has been dropped. And secondly, whatever immediately follows only if has been written in the proposition's consequent, not its antecedent. This example reveals something interesting about hypothetical propositions. Namely, that the parts of hypothetical propositions express necessary and sufficient conditions towards one another. Specifically, whatever appears in the antecedent is a sufficient condition for the consequent. So being able to make a cake is sufficient to know that I have flour. Conversely, whatever appears in the proposition's consequent is a necessary condition for the antecedent. So having flour is a necessary condition for being able to make cake. Based on what we've seen so far, we can thus identify two rules of translation. If the word if appears by itself in a proposition, then whatever immediately follows the if serves as a hypothetical proposition's antecedent. It's a sufficient condition for the consequent. However, if we have an only if in a proposition, then whatever immediately follows it serves as a hypothetical proposition's consequent. It's a necessary condition of the antecedent. Now let's consider what role all of this plays in biconditional propositions. Here's an example. I will buy you a Ferrari if and only if you graduate. First of all, note that this proposition is the conjunction of two separate statements. First, if you graduate, then I will buy you a Ferrari. And, I will buy you a Ferrari only if you graduate. Now, the second proposition contains the term only if. And as we've seen, it can be translated into a hypothetical proposition. Namely, if I buy you a Ferrari, then you graduated. Remember, what follows the only if goes in the consequent of the hypothetical. So what we have then is that the biconditional proposition is the conjunction of if you graduate, then I will buy you a Ferrari, and if I buy you a Ferrari, then you graduated. Putting this in terms of necessary and sufficient conditions then, we can say that graduating is a necessary and a sufficient condition of my buying you a Ferrari. Of course, the opposite holds as well. My buying you a Ferrari is both a necessary and sufficient condition of your graduating. Because biconditional propositions state that kind of relationship between the subpropositions on either side of the if and only if, we can say that if one of the conditions is true, the other must be true. If one is false, the other must be false. They stand or fall together. That then is how we generate the valid and invalid by conditional syllogisms. The logic of hypothetical and by conditional syllogisms gets really interesting when we see how to express hypothetical and by conditional relationships without actually using the terms if then or if and only if. That's what we'll cover in the next section.